Every once in a while, a special game comes to visit me from across the ocean. Just another forbidden blue fruit of many that I paid some tea taxes on to bring over to the land of no fun allowed, known as America. I got three words for you: battle, construction, vehicles. This is just the sort of game that fills me with existential dread when I play it. I ask myself, what did America ever do? due to the country of Japan to deny us this game. I've been racking my brain and I honestly can't think of any one thing we did wrong to Japan. Not one single thing. I think we've just been nice to them this entire time throughout history. We didn't do nothing wrong. The developers of this hilarious game have an equally funny name. Art Dink. Pioneers in experimental game design like Art Dink are few and far between in the modern era. They were behind games like the prehistoric life simulator, Tale of the Sun, where the goal was to raise a bunch of cavemen to go out there and slay mammoths, collect their tusks, and build a tower to reach the sun. They were also responsible for the first person underwater exploring Aquanauts Holiday, which omitted the restrictions of time and allowed players the leisure of being an observer in the vast ocean of animals. And last but certainly not least, my personal favorite art dink game, No One Can Stop Mr. Domino, which is about a domino man that no one can stop. Artin created games without any concern of what other developers were doing at the time. There were no lessons in social morality placed as a centerpiece to attract fair weather gamers looking for entertainment hiding behind a cause. The games they created captured the essence of escapism. They allowed the players to forget about the craziness of the world by introducing them to a new crazy world. Artin were the kind of developers that made games that remained in your memories for a very long time. And in the end, isn't there some sort of value in that? Let's get to it. Battle Construction Vehicles, or better known by its Japanese title as Kinsetsu Juiki Kenka Bataru Buchigiri Kongo, or sloppily translated by Google Translate to Construction Heavy Machinery Fighting Battle Ball Grip Kimono. <laughs> It never fails. The anime intro to BCV sets a high fucking bar. There's no way a game could reach these levels. And there's no attract mode to give you any idea of what the gameplay is gonna be like within it. I'm expecting Megas XLR. But what I got was dollar store construction toys twisted metal. And it does sound a little cool when I say it out loud. But oh god, hold on to your butts. Kazukio Danore. Remain refined at all times. Heavy machinery should always move with grace. This red-haired guy is Hayato Kongo, our protagonist for the game. And just like me, he caught a case of the dead dads. And as a result, he inherits his father's construction company that he wants absolutely nothing to do with. You're tough, Gramps. Listen to me. You must succeed your father. I beg you, young master. Shut it. Gramps, I left because I didn't want to do just that. So he's dead. <sighs> Still no reason to change my mind. Hayato may have an anime face, but he has the spirit of a British man. So therefore, he puts on his red coat and bootstraps and goes out to look for a new job until Denora shoves a crane into his face and challenges him to a construction vehicle's battle. BCV. God damn it, Mom, you did it again. You said you were going out to the store to pick me up Vigilante 8 and a new dad, and you came back with neither says demolish your opponents with 15 playable characters, 14 construction vehicles, and 20 special attacks. Let's address the construction vehicles. There's only about six different types. There's dump trucks, cranes, diggers, forklifts, bulldozers, and steamrollers. That's it, man. It seems like they're counting the other vehicles that are just a different color with the same exact attacks. And if that's an accurate way to measure how many characters you have in your game, 
game then I guess the smash roster just quadrupled each vehicle has their own light medium and heavy attacks I think there's not much distinction between moves only that they'll deal more damage maybe sometimes there's a little rope in front of the guy and when it breaks that activates your special move you activate your special move by capturing an enemy in your special move circle and then the cool starts to show up Taste of the ocean. And that's that. Congo crew lost these maps contain stage hazards, which may or may not activate upon contact. You got your spirit bomb barrels, giant gaping pits that break the flow of battle and are just an embarrassment to anyone that accidentally drives into them. And then there's just shit littered on the field to bump into and there's not a lot to say about it. This is just one of those experiences where I shift back and forth from hating it to loving it. At first, I thought this game had no mindful design behind it. Like it was just something that was an afterthought slapped together near the PlayStation 2's launch because they knew some saps would buy it. And then I got to the moment where there was a chain smoking dog that's operating heavy machinery who's trying to murder me and is also this guy sensei at the same time. If you just stick to it long enough and peel back enough layers, you're gonna re- the bizarre core of this shit apple and you'll be telling this story to your friends for a long time to come. So if the wonky gameplay wasn't enough to sell you on BCV, then its storyline absolutely will. As the heir to his father's company, Hayato has to rebuild it from the ground up by showing up to construction sites and outbidding the rival company in town known as the Shirabe Corporation that's ran by this conehead dick guy and managed by this caricature of 1940s anti-Japanese propaganda in human form. What kind of anti-Japanese Japanese people may this game. There's a chapter in the game called The Pheromones of Love, The Return of Beth, where Denora gets a postcard from his niece named Beth. So Hayato snatches the postcard, fantasizes about what Beth is like, and then rushes out to a construction site, presumably to fuck Beth in front of Denora. But it don't go down like that. Meet Beth. Here's a 2018 conundrum for you. What are the chances that a low-budget PlayStation 2 game from Japan, made in the year 2000, could responsibly handle a gay story arc in its game about construction vehicles battling it out? The answer may surprise you. There's a whole scene in the game where we're introduced to Beth's ex-boyfriend, Jake Wolf, who <laughs> at one point was turning tricks for money, and now he's working for the rival Shirabe company for money and then it's described that he'll do absolutely anything for money anything Beth confronts him in the middle of a construction site and tries to convince him to join the Congo crew. He denies the request to join, so Beth and Jake Wolf get into their bulldozers and engage in what can only be described as the greatest representation of post-breakup sex I've ever seen. God damn it. This gay relationship in a Japanese PlayStation 2 game is played completely straight and never for life. Laughs. It's surprisingly tender and sweet. When I left, I was carrying your photo. This photo. I know that, Beth. But my feelings haven't changed, Jake. <laughs> I still care for you. I know you do, Beth. Jake. Except for this one moment where Jake Wolf fucks a steel beam, but I don't think that's a gay joke. He just kind of up and does that on his own. He does fuck it quite good. 
For as many flaws as this game presents on the surface, it's apparent that BCV is a product of its generation. It's steeped in a not-give-a-shit mentality where fun is at the core. Modern developers would likely nix the tongue-in-cheek nature of the story by ripping out any semblance of a personal touch, instead focusing more on the simulation aspects, and they would most definitely omit the marrying my stepsister ending. Gamers lose again.